Good morning all. I'm going to show you how I do the name overlay uh, using Inkscape. I know Cody has done one or a couple with Publisher. Uh, I use Inkscape. It's free and I find it's very easy to use. So this is a wedding plaque. It's going to be seven and a half inches tall, maybe 18, 19 inches wide. Uh, Hannah and Jake Sanderson, 16th of April, 2018. Now by zooming on that a little bit, you're going to see I've done a border around the uh, inset letters, I find after it's carved, it makes it stand out a little bit more. All right, so it's quite simple. So first thing we do is we're going to click on text, Sanderson. All right, uh, there we go. I don't like that font, so I'm going to change that. Double click, come up into the fonts. I'm going to go for Times New Roman. And I want it nice and bold. Okay, so I'm going to click on to the cursor arrow and I'm going to stretch that out. That's about how wide I want it. A little bit taller. Okay, and I'm going to change the color so it's easier to see. All right, now we have red. All right, next set of text Hannah and Jake. H A N N A H and Jake. Okay, again, I don't particularly like that font, so I'm going to triple click on that, come back up into the font. I used Hanford script for the previous one, so I have to look at that one. All of these fonts I have found on a da font. Okay, oops. Zoom back in on that. Very sensitive keyboard. Okay. Now, to be able to get that uh, um, outline that I got in this one, what I need to do is make a duplicate duplicate of a uh, Hannah and Jake. So, without highlighted, just Control D and reach on it, drag down, and now you've got two. Now, you see it's left that little trail. Don't worry about that, it's just on the screen, it's not actually there. All right, now, to do that outline, I need to make one of these a bit bigger. So I'm going to highlight one of them. I'm going to come up here to Path. And I'm going to scroll down until I reach Dynamic Offset. Click on that. Now you'll see this tiny little diamond has illuminated. What I want to do is I want to click on that, hold my cursor down, and drag. And you see the letters are going to change significantly. It's a bit too big. I want it just a little bit bigger. That should do. All right, come back over here to my pointer. And I'm going to bring this up in line with these. Okay, I'm going to zoom out so I can center on that. Now I need to align this, so I'm going to hold the shift button, touch the Sanderson, and I'm going to come up to the top menu bar and find the align and distribute button. This toolbox will uh, illuminate. Now it says relative to page, we don't want that. We want relative to last selected. And I want to center it left and right. And see it shifted just slightly. And it's a little bit low for me. If I center it top to bottom, it's going to be too high. So I'm going to have to come off that. And I'm going to put it where I think is going to be good. So that's good. I'm going to highlight again and center it. All right, now with both of them still illuminated, I'll come back up here to path and do difference. And it's going to blow a hole through those letters. There we go. Now I'm coming down here to the Hannah and Jake that I actually want to use. And I'm going to slot that inside. 
looks pretty good. So you want to check that height and that height. Make sure it's all nice and even. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now I want to do the date. Just go back up. Okay, 16th of April. Underneath it again. 16th, April 2018. It's too big, so I'm going to click on my cursor, move this down slightly, and I'm going to resize that a bit. Looks good to me. Again, I don't like that font, so I'm going to put Times New Roman again, highlighting that. Back into the fonts. And Times New Roman, and we're good. Okay, rearranging it again. Nice and close. I'm going to uh, hold the Shift button, touch Sanderson, so I can uh, center everything. And we're good. All right, so now I'm going to highlight all of it and I'm going to make it into a group. So that way I can move all of it and it's not going to move around. And I, was, I want to get a border around it. So I'm going to go over to my imports. In my templates I've already got lots of shapes. I'm going to take a look through that. See one I think looks pretty good. I will go for this one I think. All right, it's importing the JPEG. I'll click OK. Now that's not really something I can work with, so I have to make that into an object. So come up here to path, object to path, path again, trace bitmap. You're going to get this little preview. If you don't get the preview, just click on uh, the live preview button and it'll pop up. Hit OK. Now it's made a duplicate of it but it is an object something you can work with so you can get rid of that my problem is it's solid fill so if i was to put that on top of my word it's going to disappear so with that illuminated come up back up to object fill and stroke get this box is going to pop up now we want to turn the fill off so over to fill turn that off Everything has disappeared. It's still there. It's just invisible. We want a border, so go to Stroke. Turn the Stroke on. We want the border a little bit fatter, so turn the 1 to, uh, say, a 5. So now we've got a nice, strong image there. Now, it's not big enough, so I'm going to stretch that out. I'm going to move it over our word so I can see how it's going to look. And this one you just play with a little bit, see, see what works best for you. I'm not overly happy with that shape for this word because I've got a lot of dead space here, but just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll go with it. Okay, I'm going to highlight both of them. So the Samson is illuminated. I'm going to hold shift, press the shape button, and I'm going to align it again. So back up here, align button. I'm going to uh, align it left to right, and align it top to bottom. See, because of where the date is, I don't like how that has gone. So let's just get rid of that. These can be a a trial elimination. Let me just do it again. Let's go for that one. Okay, click OK. Now, same thing again. Path, object path, path, trace bitmap. There we go. Click OK. Let me close that. Move that over. Delete this one. Illuminate that. Fill in stroke. Let's stroke off, stroke paint on, stroke style 5. Let's go 5. All right, now we have a nice strong border again. All right, center that again. 
I'm going to stretch this box out. Make sure I've got a nice fit. Okay, I'm a bit happier with that one now. So I'm going to holding the shift key, touch Samson, going to align it again. Line it left to right, line it top to bottom. That looks pretty good to me. I don't like the black that's throwing me off. Control Z. Fill in the stroke. Stroke paint. And go for black. All right, so that looks much better to me. So now when I uh, print it, uh, it'll be exactly as you see with that shape around it. So I'm going to make that a group, object group. Now I need to size it. Remember, I wanted it to be 7.5 by 18. So up here, we've got our measurements. So I'm going to do 7.5. All right, that gives me 23.8 cents, too big. So I'm going to take the lock button off. I'm going to bring that down to 18. That's squooshed it a bit. If I bring that down. All right, now we have a decent size sign that I can print off. So I need to mirror it. So object, flip horizontal. Now with Inkscape, you have this uh, page, this random page in the middle. It will only print what is in that page. So I can either bring this and do it uh, horizontally, which means I'll probably need to use three pages, or I can rotate it, object, rotate it clockwise, and I'll bring it over here, sorry. Bring it over here. I'm going to align it. This time when I align it, I'm going to change this from last selected to page, which is what that means. Uh, line that left to right. And print. So I'm going to print what's going to come out is exactly what's in there. So I'll print that first page. Then I'll shift this up, making sure I leave an overlap of a letter, say, uh, the N. So I'll do half the N on the previous one, half the N on the next one, so I can line them up well which is one of the other reasons why I always do the uh, shape around it, because it helps me line up my image. Print that, and we have our sign ready to carve. I hope you guys liked that, found it informative. Um, any questions, comments are more than welcome. Thank you much.